Hello everybody, welcome back. This time I'm using the um, wine butler mold from Mold and Shapes. It's actually one of their very first molds, I think the second mold they have ever done. And yeah, shame on me, I have not used it so far. Uh, yeah, as you know, um, if you are interested in this mold or any other of um, the modes from Mold and Shapes, just check my description box. And if you use the promo code PT5, you get 5% discount. Anyway, um, there you see me dividing my resin. It's the B20 resin from Depot. It's a uh, resin with low viscosity. And in one cup, I didn't put too much resin in this cup. I'm putting some um, golden metal flakes in. And now you see me stirring them, so I get them rather small because I don't want them to be too big. And these golden flakes I have actually from the carrot box, no, from the white aura box, sorry, from Scalaberry. So, yeah. And what I'm also adding are some of the golden crackles. These are from the luxury um, series from Miss Colorberry. And I'm using the chrome drizzle, also from the luxury um, collection from Miss Colorberry. And I think this is a nice mix. And finally, I'm also using the um, champagne glitter. It's the not the fine glitter from the Aura box. It's um, a little bit bigger. So this is my um, mix for some highlights in my pour. And I think it's a nice combination. So, and now I'm gonna mix my colors. I'm only using two colors. And this is the Malachit from Miss Calaberry. It's a sort of, yeah, Malachit um, greenish tone, but yeah, greenish gray. It's a very beautiful color. And I thought, just go for it. Yeah. I never know um, how much really to use, so I'm just trying to find the right um, yeah, proportion to my resin in the cup, and I'm always going by the feeling. Yeah, now I'm mixing this up very well, so I don't have any um, loose mica in my resin it's a very dark greenish grayish color but i think it looks very very beautiful and finally i'm mixing my last color and it's, um, yeah, unfortunately, Dippon um, has only the German name for the colors. And this is Kieselgrau. It's a gray that has a hint of, of beige, I would say. It's not really gray gray. But you will see it later. So I'm also mixing this very well into my resin. And we will see. <laughs> yeah, it's um, a couple of days ago I did this pour and now I finally have the time to make the um, voiceover. So sometimes it really, you know, I struggle in what row I did what 
I hope you don't mind. Yeah, I'm still giving it a good stir. Closing my jar. And now I'm taking a false cup and just pouring some clear resin in there. And I'm touching my resin a little bit to avoid air bubbles and now I pinch my cup and I pour the outer edges of this lovely mold. I really like it. I did one more pour in there before but unfortunately I didn't film it because it was a present for a good friend and I was a little bit in a hurry, hurry to do it. So I just simply forgot to film it and I thought now I'm doing a new pour with different colors, colors I have not used before so I'm very very curious. Now I'm taking the pigment paste, the gray pigment paste uh, mix. But I saw there's something in my mold. So I just take this out very carefully not to touch the resin. And I'm just pouring along the edge. Now you can see that's not a gray grayish tone it has really a hint of beige in there as well also taking my time to pour it and now i'm taking the malachit mix Also torching this a little bit. And I'm actually pouring on top of the Kieselgrau, the grayish pigment paste. Also there I'm taking my time. Finally, I'm taking my clear and I push out the colors. I mean, the technique is like I did in, in some of the other pours, but I find I always, depending on the resin, depending on what mica or what pigment paste I'm using, I always get different results. So I'm always curious how it turns out. Also, the shape of the mold is very important to have sometimes different results. So, well, at least for me, <laughs> so I'm really curious. Now I'm taking my torch. Just pop some bubbles but please guys be very careful to torch into your mold because it you know it can happen that you burn your mold and that the resin will be stuck to your mold so far i didn't have this problem but i'm always very very careful and now i'm taking the pigment paste again the gray and go along the edge again And I'm hoping for some more depths or also some nice patterns on the back side. And now I'm taking the malachite again and pour on top like I did before.
so this is sorted <laughs> and now I'm pouring the rest of my clear resin into the cup because there's still space and I want the um, wine butler or the resin to be domed into my mold so I'm just filling this up and pushing the top layer also to the sides. And some of the rest I put into my center, this little tiny heart. It's really very very tiny but I really like it <laughs> it's a nice feature and now I'm putting my highlights in there I'm not sure if I'm putting a little bit too much in there but well I will see your reactions and what you think about it because sometimes I um, think I'm putting maybe a little bit too much in there but well <laughs> it's just you 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 do the things and then later you think hmm, maybe it could have been a little bit less but we will see with the end result you can also already see that the um, colors are dragging into the center. And now I'm putting also a little bit of the malachit into this little heart, just to fill this little, little tiny mold up a little bit. Also the gray pigment paste mix And I'm touching again and again very very carefully with a very small flame and there I'm just sorting a little bit my glitter mix And again some torching and then I thought I put a little bit more of the glitter in there Yeah, I'm tidying up a little bit <laughs> it's a mess as you can see I did a pour before but now you see me putting the glitter in there just a little bit more around the opening for for the bottleneck And please don't mind the noise in the background. Um, actually, I'm making this voice over from a weekend sort of holiday because um, we are in Berlin and my boyfriend, he will run the Berlin Marathon. And this will be in two days and I'm very, very curious. So. Anyway. This is now the close-up and I really like it so far. The only thing I'm not sure, like I said, is if I use too much glitter and I really 
wonder what you think about it. But I really adore the color combination. So, and this is the next day and it's unmolding time. And it pops out, out very, very easily. I'm just very careful to take it out. There it is, and also the little heart, and it's really, really tiny. It's very cute. Where the back side is not very spectacular, also not the front side, but it's still very cute. And this is my result. It has a lot of depths on the front side, and I like the effects on the back side. Yeah, I'm very happy with this. Anyway, I take you down for close up so you can see. And there you go. This is the back side. And I think it could have really had a little bit less glitter. But look at the effects. Really love it. It's like, um, I don't know, little clouds or I cannot really say. And again, I'm turning it over. This is the other side. And I really think you can use it from both sides. That's more like waves. And yeah, I'm happy. So this is the final result, also with bottle, with the bottle, with a wine bottle and two glasses. And I think it looks very elegant. And I hope you liked the video and I see you for my next video. Thanks for watching guys. Take care and bye bye.